What's up everyone and welcome to the video. This is Bob's first video of his stream series where we're going to be creating a number of videos going over the various hardware and software that I use in my own Twitch stream. Today's video is going to be kind of like a broad overview of all the various hardware that we go into. Um, when we come across something that requires, you know, probably a little bit more detail to fully explain it, we're going to actually link another video as part of this stream series right here on screen and in the description below that you can check out to learn more about it. Uh, if you want to know that, just check out the other video uh, to save time. You know, if we go over everything here and we go into detail, this video could be, you know, one, two, three hours long, something ridiculous. And we don't want that here. We're really just hoping to inspire and also inform people who are thinking about setting up their own dual PC setup. I want to give you a fair warning before we begin. A lot of the things in here are overkill. You don't actually need all this in order to do a dual PC setup. And because of that, whenever we go over these various things, I will let you know if I recommend it, if I think it's necessary, and what I think you should do if you're on a budget instead. And of course, before we get started, um, I've got to promote myself a little bit. I do stream on Twitch every Tuesday, every Wednesday, every Thursday with optional streams on Monday and Friday. Um, definitely head over there, drop a like, come hang out. Got a pretty cool community. It's growing. It's still small, but it's growing. And uh, ask me any questions you want about, you know, gear, streaming setup, the game I'm playing. I'm open to it all. So, you know, all right, that's it. Um, that's the intro. So let's get into it. Where to begin? Where to begin? All right, so to begin, we're going to talk about the PCs. This is a video about a dual PC streaming setup, so it makes sense to begin here. Uh, when we talk about the gaming PC, we're just going to list out the various components uh, that I have in it. We're not going to actually go into much detail about that. But when we go into the streaming PC, we're going to talk about both the components and some recommendations on what I think you need um, in a streaming PC. So we're going to get right into that right now. So for the gaming PC, we have an Intel i9-11900K. It's overclocked to about 53%. The GPU is a Gigabyte RTX 3080 Ti OC. For the RAM, we have two sticks of 16 gigabyte RAM Vengeance RGB from Corsair. We have the Asus Prime motherboard, and we have two sticks of SSDs. Both of them are 970 EVOs from Samsung. The pump on the CPU is an NZXT Kraken Z63. It's the white edition. The fans are also NZXT. They're the Air 2 RGB setup. And the PSU is an 850 watt PSU from Corsair. I think that covers it all for the gaming PC. So now we're gonna move on to the streaming PC. Inside the streaming PC, we have a Ryzen 9 5800X. The GPU is an RTX 3700. The motherboard is an N7 B550 from NZXT with a lot of USB space, a lot of USB space. The RAM is two sticks of eight gigabytes from T-Force and the PSU is from Corsair, 650 watts. The fan system again is NZXT. Uh, Air 2 RGB and the pump is a Kraken Z63 just like we have in the gaming PC except the black edition and that basically covers it for the two PCs as far as what they have but talking a little bit about the streaming PC my streaming PC is overkill so I don't want anybody kind of looking at this and thinking wow so that's what it takes to have a dual PC setup not at all this PC began with a Ryzen 5 3600 in it and a Radeon 5500 XT graphics card so it wasn't actually that special we upgraded the CPU originally um, then added some more RAM added some more storage space and uh ultimately put the 3070 in it only because that was what used to be in my gaming pc but when i upgraded to the uh, 3080 ti we moved the 3070 into the streaming pc as far as recommendations go the ryzen 5 3600 was able to reliably stream at 720 at a medium oh actually that's not true it was a faster preset when i had the ryzen 5 and it, and it did a great job doing that and i had a fairly complicated stream back then 
It's hard for me to recommend it, though, because it, it was difficult. I did run into a lot of problems. I do believe that in your streaming PC, you should prioritize CPUs right now. With the pandemic, the GPU prices are still pretty bad. So, you know, go CPU. Seriously, go CPU. Probably need at least an i7 10th or 11th gen or a Ryzen 7 5800X. Those would probably do pretty good. I will say having the Ryzen 9 isn't that much more expensive than a Ryzen 7 right now. And that thing is a beast. The Ryzen 9 allowed me to stream at a medium preset and record high quality video at the same exact time. And I think that's a game changer. When you're designing your streaming PC, you should think, how am I going to be able to create content best and most efficiently? And the most efficient way to create content is to stream and record at the same time. And you can do that with the Ryzen 9 pretty good. The 3070 comes into play for me just because, again, it came out of my gaming PC. Right now, my setup in OBS is I use the CPU X264 encoder for the stream on a slow preset and I do my simultaneous recording with the NVENC uh, NVIDIA hardware encoder. Uh, and that's been working pretty good. I'm able to record really high quality video while also streaming high quality, at least as high quality as you can. The bit rate and, at uh, Twitch is pretty terrible, um, but still slow preset, very happy with it. Again, my streaming PC is definitely overkill, but it does have its uses. If you have the money to spend, go right ahead. Um, but if you're on a budget, again, prioritize the CPU, focus on CPU encoding. The only thing this PC is going to be doing is streaming. So you don't really need a very hefty graphics card. And if you go with something like a Ryzen 9, you're going to be able to record and stream in very high quality at the same time, even with something like a Radeon 5500 XT. And again, my 5500 XT was the four gigabyte. So yeah, it's pretty bad. All right, with that, we're now gonna move on to our monitors. All right, so for the monitors, we've got another situation where it's a little bit of an overkill. We have four monitors right now, so we'll talk about the simple ones first. We have two matching monitors. They're both Dell ISP panels, 60 frames per second, nothing special about them. They're really good for uh, productivity. 24 inches we have one that's in portrait mode one that's in landscape mode and in the middle we have two 27 inch gaming monitors so the one above is actually my retired gaming monitor it's 144 hertz asus tough if i'm remembering correctly um, and it was really good don't get me wrong i don't i, I would actually recommend that um, monitor for anybody and i'll, I'll include a amazon link down below uh, ultimately I ended up going with the monitor below it's a 27 inch 1440p 240 hertz monitor from alienware this monitor is amazing but extremely expensive uh, i'll have a link down below for this one as well the color depth of this monitor is shockingly beautiful for me it does come with true g-sync too which i don't really understand what the difference between that and uh regular g-sync is but you know the reviews ranted and raved about it so that's basically it for the monitors all right this next part is probably going to be one of the longest parts i'm hoping uh to get through it fairly quickly and that's my audio my audio is probably the most complicated part of my setup it's the thing that i'm most picky about and i'm always trying to improve upon i think audio makes or breaks uh, a live stream at least for me when i go in and listen to a live stream if it's got bad audio it's, it's a an immediate turnoff. And there's some big streamers out there with really bad audio. We have a number of devices involved in this, so we're gonna go over that um, at a higher level. And again, there's I have a number of videos in the stream series uh, about this specifically. Those videos are showing on the screen right now, and you can find links to them in the description below as well. And we'll re reference them throughout this video. So I think the easiest way to do this is gonna be to begin with the gaming pc which is kind of weird so the gaming pc is running an hdmi cable into a 4k capture card into the streaming pc the streaming pc then outputs an hdmi cable into what is known as an hdmi audio extractor that hdmi audio extractor allows me to pull the audio from the hdmi source in my gaming pc through an aux cable a 3.55 millimeter aux cable and an optical cable. I run that optical cable to an Astro Mixamp Pro 
and I run the aux cable to my Go XLR Mini. We go into detail about this in the video that's on the screen right now. So if you want to know why I do that um, in detail, check out that video. It, it has some really good information and recommendations. And we'll also show you how to set this kind of thing up. At a high level, the reason why I do that is it allows me to have separation of audio. The stream can have one game audio. Me personally, while I'm playing the game, I can have a different game audio. There are just circumstances where I want to have more game audio or less game audio or more voice chat and less voice chat. This allows me to create a consistent experience for my viewers on my stream while allowing me to adjust as I need to in the game that I'm playing. So moving on from there, we get to the mixer. So yes, we do have two Go XLRs. We have the Go XLR Mini, Go XLR XL. The Go XLR Mini is hooked up directly to my gaming PC, whereas the Go XLR XL is hooked up directly to my streaming PC. Some people out there right now might be raising an eyebrow. That's a little backwards than what you're used to hearing. You know, there's this really popular video by Alpha Gaming where Harris says, don't do what I just said I do. He basically says, whatever you do, hook up the Go XLR, the main one you're going to use to your gaming PC. And he's not wrong there. The problem is there's a lot of advantages to hooking up a Go XLR, your main Go XLR that is, to your streaming PC. You're able to keep Discord private. Um, you're able to run all these applications from your streaming PC so your gaming PC can focus completely on the game. Now the argument for hooking it up to the gaming PC is the opposite. Make your gaming PC do the extra work while your streaming PC only has to focus on streaming. And this is 100% true unless you have a streaming PC like the one I have. My streaming PC, again, is overkill. It can handle streaming and recording at the same time at really high quality and running Discord and running Chrome and running all these different things. Most streaming PCs can't do that. So unless you have a system like mine, yes. If you do not have a streaming PC like mine, then hook up your Go XLR XL to your gaming PC. So I do all my voice chat through the stream, etc., etc. And moving on from there, we have a speaker system. I actually don't remember what the speakers are. Yeah. Mm. Oh, okay. The label says creative. So they're creative speakers, whatever that means. Um, and we have the Astro Mix Amp Pro. So sometimes we're routing the audio from this entire system from the back of the Go XLR to our speakers. That's when we're not streaming and we don't feel like wearing a gaming headset. Um, during the stream, of course, everything's going to the mix amp. In between the speakers, mix amp, and Go XLRs, we have an aux switch. That aux switch is what I use to switch the output of all my audio from the Go XLR XLR. I didn't say that right. In between the mix amp and Go XLR XL, we have an aux switch and that aux switch is what allows me to send the audio either to my speakers or to my mix amp so it's just a cool little trick i get all my audio into one batch send it out to this aux switch and depending on whether or not i'm streaming or wearing my headset or wanting to hear things through the speaker we can send audio in multiple different directions so it's a really cool setup you can get really creative with aux cables there's like 40 aux cables here it's absolutely ridiculous i had to literally draw maps in order to make sense of all the aux cables that i have going on oh one thing we almost forgot our headset we do use an a40 headset because we're using the astro mix amp pro the a40 pairs with it very well it's a custom headset and if you look at the side here this is my old logo we actually need to update this if you use uh the astro design labs you can get a custom a40 so so this color i picked out the black i picked out and i designed my own plates here on the ears the last thing i should mention is if you do try hooking up a go xlr with a mix amp pro you're gonna have to put a ground loop isolator between the two it has something to do with the fact that they both are on i don't think i said that right they're powered individually yeah there we go i like the way that sounded powered individually anyways um, otherwise, you're going to get some really bad static through the mix amp. So make sure you pick up a ground loop isolator if you're going to mix a mix amp with a Go XLR. And yes, we have another video, another video in the stream series where we talk about all the advantages to having an Astro Mix Amp Pro 
and putting it with a go xlr it actually enhances your gaming setup and your stream setup tenfold i highly recommend checking out that video where i explain how i do it and how you can fully take advantage of the mix amp and the go xlr and all their features just to create this really cool kind of audio setup which reminds me there's videos out there right now that tell you how to hook up a go xlr with a mix amp pro they're all wrong so little sneak peek about that video go check it out you can totally use the mix amp pro to its fullest capability with a go xlr and that's where those videos get it wrong lastly uh we have this mic that i'm talking into right now this is the sure sm7b it is probably the top level mic you can get it's one of the most popular mics uh, for a stream you feel more confident when you talk into it it is a dynamic mic so it is xlr as you can see from this cable and you will have to have a system that can take a, uh, an xlr cable and run it into your pc recommendations again this is overkill you do not need to go xlrs if you have the money for it sure you don't need it though I had a very specific use case for it, and that use case is trying to separate my game audio between myself and my stream. You can get away with just a single Go XLR, but you actually don't even need it. In fact, the Astro Mix Amp is all you need in a dual PC setup to create a situation where you can get your voice chat and your game audio, et cetera, et cetera. Um, you can just capture your game audio through the capture card and then use the stream port on the back of something like an Astro Mix Amp Pro to capture your voice chat do i recommend the go xlr yes i think it is a great tool for streamers and i think it should be on your radar should it be one of the first things you get if you're on a budget absolutely not focus on getting a mic and a camera and a monitor and the dual pcs before you ever think about getting a go xlr as far as the mic goes um i of course recommend the sure sm7b but it is a pricier uh dynamic mic um if you're looking for a cheaper option, I know a lot of people who use Wave 3 from Elgato, and I think it sounds amazing for a USB mic. I have owned Yetis before. They don't come anywhere close to the Wave, in my opinion, as far as quality goes. So if you're gonna go with the cheaper mic and a USB mic at that, check out the Wave 3 from Elgato. It really does sound fantastic. It almost sounds as good as this. So now let's talk about the cameras. I have three cameras as part of my setup and we're gonna begin with the main camera. So this is the camera that is usually on during my stream. It's my face cam, if you will. Um, that is actually a DSLR from Canon. It's the SL3 Rebel. Um, I do have a link below um, and that link will show you this camera that comes with a pretty nice lens. I believe the lens is 18 millimeter to 35 millimeter with a focal length of 4.0 that is not the lens i use anymore i did upgrade to a wide angle lens that has a focal length of two um, and goes down to 16 millimeters um, i just think it adds a little bit extra that low focal length is really what you're looking for if you're going to go dslr camera wise as far as i'm concerned most streaming rooms are intentionally dark with some sort of lighting system on you at least there should be some sort of lighting uh, source on you specifically to try to give you that separation from the background and a lower focal length allows you to kind of bring those lights that are focused on you down which is really nice because if you're like me and you have these lights blaring in at you all day like they have been today they've been learn at me all damn day and I am tired because of it then your eyes are going to start to hurt from it so if you can dim those lights down and still get a very bright colorful looking image from your DSLR that's really nice so you lower the focal length you're going to be able to get that I think it adds some color to the background as well a little bit more than the other lens with that said the stock lens that comes with the Canon SL3 or SL3 Rebel that I have linked below is very good. I use that for a very long time. You may even like that more than a wide angle lens. Granted, you do not need a DSLR. That brings us to the next set of cameras we have. We have the Brio 4K, which before I got the Canon, that was my main camera. It's a wide angle webcam um, and has really good customization through the, um, what is it called? G-Hub application. Um, and I and that camera I do recommend I really do recommend it I think it does give a very good image it's the best webcam I've used I've used three and it, it's by far the best webcam I've, I've used uh, additionally we have the also common c9220 from Logitech 
that's probably the most popular camera out there for streaming the c9220 is a great starting camera it's a great starting camera i do recommend down the road trying to get a better camera you know having a higher image quality during your stream just feels like you can engage better and hey if you have the money go dslr there's there's nothing that's going to look as good as you know a professional uh camera all right lastly all we're going to talk about you know some of our gear that doesn't fall into the earlier categories like the keyboard the mouse the controller the lights the stream deck things like that um, just some kind of miscellaneous objects along with our actual hardware for for playing the game uh, we're going to start with the stream deck we have the three by five stream deck from elgato i do think this is an extremely useful tool i use it the entire time during a live stream and while i'm recording for the keyboard we have a glorious gmmk pro it's a custom keyboard the mouse is a logitech g pro x wireless the super light definitely the best mouse that i've ever used uh, very happy with this mouse highly recommend it especially if you need a lightweight mouse you're playing first person shooters this is this is an amazing mouse for first person shooters for the streaming pc we do use our old mouse which is a razor basilisk this is a really cool mouse it has a lot of buttons on it it is a wireless mouse um wasn't that great for first person shooter games it was great for rpgs and things like that due to all the additional buttons but a little heavy another thing i want to talk about actually and this might be one of my favorite pieces of hardware in the entire stream is my foot pedal this is an Ikelos basic foot pedal that I got off of Amazon. The link will be below. And I use this for push to talk. So basically, uh, when my foot is on it, my chat in Discord or Xbox Game Bar party chat can hear my voice. When my foot is off of it, only my stream can hear my voice. My stream hears my voice the entire time. And this is extremely useful. You will have those friends if you just start streaming who are going to get annoyed because they can't tell if you're talking to them or if you're talking to your stream, especially if you're playing competitive games where communication is really important. Go ahead and get yourself a pedal. Go ahead and use push to talk. Avoid that awkward, weird frustration from the people you play with live on stream because it does happen. It happens all the time. Additionally, our lights. So we are using both these are Elgato lights. Um, they're both key lights. One of them is a key light air. The other one is just the regular key light, um, which is actually the more expensive one. Uh, we use the key light as our main lighting. We use the key light air as kind of our fill in light. And then behind me, I just have some basic lights that I got off from Amazon. It's a blue light that's really, really way up there and just kind of puts a little bit of backlighting on me. So we are using three point lighting here. I do recommend going for a nicer um, key light. The Elgato one is great for your main, and then you can go a little cheaper for the other two. Um, you know, so your main should be your best light, your fill-in light should be your second best light, and your uh, backlight. You know, that can be anything. It could be a lamp. I mean, it really doesn't matter. Just as long as it's shining on the back of you and it's not in your camera view. Uh, it should do the job for controller um, we are using an xbox elite series 2 controller it is a custom controller we can see it has the white buttons and things like that i do use all pedals i recently made the move to mouse and keyboard though and haven't been playing on controller very much lately all right guys and that's gonna do it i think we covered everything i hope we covered everything um i want to thank you for watching the whole video i hope uh you found some inspiration for your own setups if you're planning to build a dual pc setups or at the very least you just enjoyed hearing me talk about my stuff that works too as a reminder if you liked the video make sure you hit the like button and make sure you subscribe and if you enjoyed this type of video and this kind of content and you'd like to see more videos like this from me, just let me know down in the comments or even better, jump into my live stream on Twitch, which again, we're doing every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Those streams usually start no later than 2 p.m. EST, ending around 5.30 EST with optional streams on Monday and Friday. And chat with me about it there. I love to talk this stuff, so I'm completely open to people jumping in chat, asking me questions about my videos or anything about my setup in general. 
also make sure you check out the other videos in the stream series on my channel uh those are really good videos where we go into a lot more detail they're very heavy related to my audio setup and some recommendations and some cool tricks that you can do with obs for example in one video i just talk about the replay buffer and how you can use that uh, to your advantage when you have a dual pc setup and you have a strong enough stream machine to handle recording and streaming at the same time it will really really increase your productivity because you're going to be able to do a lot more at one time and you're going to be able to record small bits of things and that's all that's all i've got for you guys again thanks for watching the video have a good one